Hi, I'm Scott Hall. I'm the editor and publisher of Part-Time Audiophile. Today, I'm going through my list of questions that have been asked kind of repeatedly um, throughout my, my career as, a, as an audio writer and reviewer. The thing I want to start with today is a canard, I think, something that I've heard over and over again. Um, and it comes under this category of what is important in high-end audio and maybe what's most important as if there is one thing but there, let's just say that there is right and this argument goes uh if you don't do this then you are wasting your time there's an enormous number of folks out there who believe that their way is the way and if not uh, if you disagree you are uh dumb wrong wasting money i don't know it's it's religion, right? It's how that goes. I think that the major, uh, the major confusion, I think that, that kind of gets pushed off onto new audio files is this expectation that some things matter more than other things, that some things in fact matter disproportionately um, and that therefore they have to do one thing before they can do anything else. And I think that's how this argument gets started. This, this idea that the most important component in any hi-fi system is the room. Uh, this is how I've heard it, right? That if you don't get the room right, it doesn't matter what you get uh, elsewise. That it doesn't matter how great your speakers are, doesn't great doesn't matter how great the rest of your system is. Uh, it's all about the room and the room interaction. There's something to this, right? So the idea that uh, you have uh, oddly shaped rooms or rooms that create resonances or echo or have um, strange room notes that emphasize certain frequencies or, or de-emphasize other ones and usually doing uh, two different frequencies at the same time. It doesn't it makes sense, right? This is uh, this is a problem. It's a huge problem for for good uh, for good sound. There is a reason why there is the science of acoustics, right? It's how does sound waves? How do they how do they work? How do they interact in real spaces? It's one of the reasons that I think audiophiles uh, uh, kind of talk about at least those with money talk about building a dedicated room. Uh, it's something they can they can really work on. They can control. They can eliminate, if you will, the room. So they'll they'll maybe construct a room or find a room that has magical dimensions that keep the room nodes down to a bare minimum. That they'll they'll set up uh, base traps and reflection panels and maybe even uh, some some side panels and ceiling panels all in an effort to eliminate these unwanted acoustical artifacts, things that could alter or, or damage the experience uh, of their high-end audio system. It makes sense. Uh, it's, it's a thing. And I think that uh, it's, also, it's also kind of weird, right? Um, this, this artificial temple of sound is I think anathema to the idea of what high-end audio hi-fis, right, are, are about, which is sharing music. Um, yeah. So if you're not actually doing this in relationship, uh, that is, you're, you're, you're doing this on your own, that is, you, you've removed yourself to the sanctum sanctorum. This is your private, private space. This is the, the thing that you do. You've ca carved out of your world a space where only you can be, right? And the sound field that's perfect is right here. You can't move. It's, it's odd. It's an odd thing to do. Now there are people where this makes sense, right? They live alone. They're 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 not they're not married. They they have no children, uh, no no pets. They just literally uh, have this one thing that's for them, and that thing is high end audio. So, fine. If that's who you are, fine. If high end audio is that thing that you are are doing to keep yourself sane, right? Maybe you're you're a doctor right now, maybe even an ER doctor. Uh, in the, the time of the coronavirus, this is the place you go to be apart and be away and be and become sane, recharge. I get it, but for just about everybody else, come on, right? 
get out of your house, out, at least out of your sanctorum, and go be with people. Saying that now, let, let's remember we're in the middle of the plague, so post-plague season. But maybe you are trapped with friends and family, right? Or maybe just family. I think that music in living spaces is way more interesting and engaging and true to the hobby, right? Uh, when we go to a concert, it's not just me and whoever the performer is, right? It's, it's, it's friends and family. I go with people. So having that uh, experience where I can actually have music with my friends, family, uh, have it in my, in my life, in my living room, I think that is way more interesting. Uh, so that's my my hope, right? That we're, we're moving away from the, the hyper-specialized, microscopic kind of uh, field of, of audio vision and, and into a lived space, right? Because I want music to be part of your life, right? I think the musicians want, your, want their music to be part of your life. It's, it's not something we, 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 we retreat from. It's something we uh, engage with. Yeah, that's what I think. So what I want to say, though, is that uh, this is not necessarily a trade-off, right? There are ways to do uh, great systems in real spaces. And if you're looking for uh, the reason, right, to, to, to justify this, um, well, you know, you've you got to remember that these audio shows that I keep talking about are, are uh, non-ideal spaces. They're just not. Uh, they're 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 pre-configured. They're they're a certain dimension, and that's it. There's all kinds of weird objects in those rooms, and some of them can't be removed. You can't necessarily get a relationship to the to the source the way that you want. And yet, the sound in most of those audio showrooms, at least these days, are, is phenomenal. Right? It's phenomenal. Even when the room is odd, you'll see people do something interesting with speakers. Even when the room is not ideal, right? You'll see somebody uh, do something that will make this sound enjoyable, engaging, something more than what they had. And I, I kind of want to keep that, that reality in mind. Yes, your room is important. And yes, room treatments are, are relevant. I, I think that they may get over stated. I think that uh, it's, this is nowhere near the first thing I invest in when I look at a, buying a new uh, system for a room or, or a, a space. Um, it's maybe something I, I, I add later. I kind of put it in the category of tweaks. And the reason I do that is because I need, I need the space to be uh, livable, right? I can't go into my living room and rip out all the furniture and replace it all with, with uh, panels and, and base traps. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stay married and that room would no longer serve the original function, right? It would be something odd, something different, um, uh, romper room for, for adults. I want, I want to instead uh, add to my uh, lived space in a way that maybe makes a difference. But I would rather, far rather uh, have suboptimal sound that can be shared than have perfect sound that's only uh, enjoyable by one. So that's me. Okay, so with that said, I wanna then now move to, well, how would I spend my money? If, if the room isn't the most important thing, uh, what is? Uh, this is very uh, odd as a question, right? What is the most important thing? And I don't mean it in the sense of uh, it's, it's malformed or something, a uh, question that, no one, that you're dumb for asking. It's, it's just how do you approach it really depends on who you are. Uh, I know people who start with a record player. That's what they came to high-end audio for. They're playing records. I know some people who, who uh, do this the other way around. Uh, they have a loudspeaker in mind um, that they love. And personally, I'm of the latter camp, right? There are uh, sounds that I love. Um, and so I tend to look for systems that I can build that kind of make that experience uh, more heightened. Uh, you know, say it like this, right? There are uh, panel speakers, really amazing panel speakers from Magnapan, from, from Martin Logan, from many other companies. There are, uh, and they do some really incredible things. And they, they do them in ways that um, uh, don't necessarily 
excite the room, right? So that's an interesting interaction between speaker and room. Uh, this particular type of speaker tends to be uh, easier on, 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 your, on your imperfect room. So that's one. Uh, then there's uh, horn speakers, right? Horn speakers like uh, things from uh, uh, Volte Audio or, or Living Voice or Avant Garde. These, these uh, systems become works of art very quickly and very visually striking, which is pretty cool. Uh, they can also consume a lot of space uh, and that may not be cool, but there is something that horns do, right? It's very, very dynamic. So people really, some people really, really gravitate towards that. Uh, and then some maybe somewhere in the middle is the dynamic loudspeakers. And there are some uh, loudspeaker designers that are doing some incredible work, right? Uh, Von Schweiker, Joseph Audio, DeVore Fidelity, Kef. These companies out there are uh, pushing, I think, the state of the art in directions that are really, really interesting and can get you something that maybe, um, I don't know, somebody else might not. So what I do, what I recommend is I ask your opinion about what you like. What is it that you're interested in? What kind of sound uh, are you kind of uh, aiming towards? There's no wrong answer here. There's no right answer, but there's no wrong answer here. So I, I recommend you start with your loudspeaker. Find a loudspeaker that you like and then find a... Uh, uh, yeah, the amplifier that makes that loudspeaker, loudspeaker sing. This is the, uh, I think, next big investment. Uh, your loudspeaker is one part, but it's like one part of a set, right? Um, you can't just buy a loudspeaker and have it be awesome. It's the loudspeaker amplifier combo that really uh, completes it, right? So a loudspeaker without an amp is is nothing, right? A loudspeaker with an amp becomes a system. So I'm looking for an amplifier that makes my preferred loudspeaker awesome. Um, and it's, there's a lot of ways to do that too. So put that off to the side. So loudspeaker amp. The next big thing uh, I look for are probably, uh, probably sources, right? So uh, streamers, computer servers, um, uh, turntables, tape decks, whatever it is that I'm using to grab the music and, and pump it into the system. It's probably my next big expenditure. As an audio reviewer, I tend to need more in this than others, right? Uh, I spend a lot of time with digital audio converters, right? So my, I spend the vast majority of my listening with, with computer audio. So DACs are really high in my, my, uh, my priority list. And then I kind of spend money ho however, right? So I may spend money on cables. I may spend money on power, conditioning, and distribution. Depends on where I live and what I'm facing with. Uh, the rack, the, all of that stuff comes out of that next set of uh, expenditures. The thing that I think we probably miss the most, and I you didn't even list it in my, in my, in my, uh, my chart there, is the preamp. Um, this is, in many ways, the heart of the system right? Uh, and it's not just the volume control. It, it is, it is, does do that, but it's also the connectivity points where everything comes into it. Uh, so a system can really fall down right at the preamplifier. Uh, I know a lot of folks are now moving to a digital only front end, like a DAC right driving directly into an amp. And I think that's really transparent. It can be, it can be done really, really well. Uh, especially if the DAC is designed for this. Many DACs aren't. Uh, they're just using the on-chip controls to do um, volume attenuation and it sounds okay. But a good, a good preamp can take a good system to greatness. I, I think it can, right? Uh, and this is maybe one of my own little my little quirks. So I'm, I'm looking for, I'm looking for a, a system that's really going to uh, serve me uh, and the needs and the interests that I have in the space that I'm going to try and drop it in. So um, the room in that list is, is kind of the background, but it's, and it's also the last thing I come back to. Is there something I can do to this room that would uh, allow the, uh, say the bass to be louder, right? Or uh, is there too much slap echo that I really need to uh, do something with, or otherwise it's just too distracting and you have some kind of odd resonances. So there are things that could be done 
but I do them last after the system is kind of built the way I want it to uh, and sounds kind of the way I want it to. So that's my, that's my, my feeling here, uh, how I would uh, look and spend my money, how I would approach building an audio system. I unfortunately do not subscribe to the room is the most important part of your audio system. Um, though that said, if you look around my, my, uh, my listening room, I've got a ton of acoustic treatments in here that are designed to help me eliminate um, distractions so that uh, I can make very fine discriminations. I'm an audio reviewer, not just an audio file. So the system I listen to most has none of this stuff, right? Uh, it's much simpler, in fact, than my, my review system. I recommend that you guys try that out too. Uh, just listen to music, put, put music, a better system into your living room, play with your, uh, your, your turntable, get your, your family and kids uh, interested in LPs or, or, or listening to tape, especially now when we're home. Um, anyway, I think it's really cool. It's really fun. Your mileage may vary, uh, obviously. And, and of course, I'd love to get your feedback. Feel free to go ahead and hit me up in the comments. Look forward to engaging more about this. Uh, I hope to see you soon. Visit parttimeaudiofile.com for more. All right, take care.